Hello, this is John from VJ Books, and we're talking books. Today, I'd like to talk about book plates. Collectors want signatures in their books, and there are numerous ways to get them. The most common is signed directly on the title page. Uh, that's the preferred thing. But sometimes you just can't get that, and when that's not possible, uh, we use book plates. I've got some samples here today to show you, and we'll go through those briefly, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the application of those particular book plates. Many publishers produce their own book plates with their logos and their name on them, and then send them out to the authors who sign them and make them available to their fans and readers, either distribute them themselves or they make them available at book signings and other venues. Here is a sample of a book plate signed by author James Elroy. Similarly, here's a St. Martin's book plate signed by the author Matthew Riley. A Tor book plate signed by author Greg Bear. Sometimes publishers will produce book plates for a specific title. Here is a John Grisham signed book plate for his title, A Painted House. This one is a Janet Ivanovich for her title, To the Nines. Authors frequently produce their own book plates. Here's one by Dean Kuntz. He has a series of book plates he produced over the years, and this is one of his latter ones. And Jim Butcher produced this book plate for one of his more recent titles. The more common book plates are those just uh, with a common border signed by the author, like this one from Dennis Lehane. Here's one by Tim O'Brien. This one's signed by Peter Straub. And this one is signed by both Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. Probably the more valuable book plates, if you get into collecting book plates, are those by authors who are no longer with us, like this one from author Elmore Leonard. Here's one from Robert B. Parker, Elizabeth Peters, and from the mystery author, Donald Westlick. Next, we're going to talk about how the books have the plates put into them. This is a graphic novel by Orson Scott Card. As you can see, the book plate is attached uh, to the first free end paper in this book. Uh, they're stuck to the book. Uh, this is not the preferred method, but you'll find this frequently, especially when they come out from the publisher. Here's one attached to a page in Dean Kuntz's Intensity. This is another one of his specialty book plates that he put out for Christmas in 1995. Sometimes publishers create limited editions by putting book plates in their regular run books. This is a first edition of Dan Brown's Lost Symbol. The publisher put a book plate signed by the author on the first free end paper on, in this book and then embossed it and numbered it, creating a limited edition of only 700 copies. Scarcer, a little more value. But probably one of the more curious ways to use book plates is by attaching them or putting them in a book of an author who has, is deceased. Uh, this book came out after Donald Westlake's uh, death, and uh, it, it has a book plate attached to it, making it a signed edition. Curiously, when Westlake signed these, he kind of laughed and said, you know, you can make signed editions of my books after I'm gone. And that's exactly what happened in this case. The preferred way to use a book plate is really just to lay it into the book. Lay it in, keep it in the book. That way, if you can have the book signed at a later date, you can use the book plate in another book. We wrap all of our books in acetate covers and lay the book plate inside the cover so it's safely protected. That way you don't deface the book or the book plate, making it usable in a future book. Pretty simple. Book plates are preferred over an unsigned book, and we uh, have a large variety of them and make them available on our website. Check us out on vjbooks.com. Thanks for watching.